ladies, good morning and welcome to Coffee with Kelly week 57. I am blessed today. I feel blessed. I hope you do too. And so thank you, Pam, for my beautiful blessed mug. And our topic this morning is a word that I think we all deal with at one time or another, and it's overwhelmed. So let's pray. Father, we do come before you right now. And Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your spirit, Lord. I thank you uh, of your great love for us. And I thank you, Father, that when we are overwhelmed, we can run to you. Uh, Lord, I pray that as we kind of just look at what it means to be overwhelmed, what overwhelms us and what we can do about it in this short time, God, that you would minister to our hearts, that you would challenge us, that you would encourage us that you would give us ideas, Lord, and uh, show us things and ways that we can help uh, reduce those feelings of being overwhelmed. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so again, overwhelmed. Overwhelmed is a feeling or an emotion that we feel quite often, don't we? And there's a lot of reasons for it. Uh, overwhelmed with life in general sometimes. Sometimes we're so overwhelmed we can't even, like, even say what is overwhelming us because we're so overwhelmed and then someone comes to help and we're so overwhelmed we can't even delegate and give them anything because it's even more overwhelming to think of getting organized enough to become unoverwhelmed. You know what I'm saying, ladies? So overwhelmed means being completely submerged by your thoughts and emotions about all of life's problems, which can make you feel frozen or paralyzed. I wish I could see your hands because if I said, hey, everyone, raise your hand who's filled overwhelmed, I'm sure all of you are raising it. Defeated, it means defeated completely, like you're buried or drowning but, uh, underneath a huge mass, something that is overpowering, great in strength. Um, so those are some definitions of overwhelmed. And you think I'm buried or submerged under a mass, a mass of what? a mass of problems, a mass of paperwork, a mass of duties, a mass of responsibilities, uh, a mass of to-do lists, or a mass of expectations. That mass can be anything. And all of those things can cause us to feel overwhelmed. Now, when I uh, look through the Bible, though, at times when the writers used uh, the word overwhelmed or similar words, it was kind of frequent. I found a lot of different emotions that would lead up or cause someone to feel overwhelmed, such as in Nehemiah 2.2, it talks about being overwhelmed with fear. Psalm 18.4 talks about being overwhelmed by chaos. Psalm 35.12, overwhelmed with sorrow. Psalm 44.15, <coughs> overwhelmed with humiliation. Psalm 55.5, overwhelmed with horror. Psalm 65, 3, overwhelmed by our sins. Jeremiah 8, 21, overwhelmed with dismay. 2 Corinthians 7, 7, overwhelmed with grief. So just right there in a few scriptures, fear, chaos, sorrow, humiliation, horror, sins, dismay, grief. I'm going to add busyness. All these things can breed overwhelmedness. Being overwhelmed isn't a sign of failure or weakness. We think that. Perhaps it's a failure if we haven't de uh, you know, delegated right or uh, said yes to too many things. But just when we automatically feel overwhelmed, we just think, oh, what a failure. I should be able to handle this. But it's not a sign of that. And when we look at it like that, that just causes more guilt and shame and more wrong emotions. It means we're at the end of our rope and, and however we got there, we are. We've taken on too much or something like that. I was reading an article this week about being overwhelmed and on this topic and it was describing all different reasons why we feel overwhelmed and how this happens. And they said it was really interesting because it was also talking about kind of a psychological approach, which I'm not a psychologist, but I find that so fascinating. They said our brain freezes, our emotions rise, and our self tells us this is just too much. The requirements of our lives, whether it's real or perceived, feels greater than our personal resources, and our brain goes into this mode and it freezes. 
We often hear about the response, the fight or flight response, but there's a third part of it too, I guess, and it's called freeze, where we shut down and suddenly can't seem to think or process or do one more thing. It's actual thing that our brain does. Uh, they went into, in this article, it went into pretty in depth, um, the, uh, the nervous system and all the things that happens. But bottom line, if we, say, if we stay stressed too long, the parasympathetic side of our nervous system, which is uh, responsible for slowing us down and helping us relax, it kicks in and we experience a freeze. These systems are designed by God to override the logical parts of our mind. It's like an emergency break that God built into us to signal us that it's time to stop. So God created our brains like that. It's like, er, it's time to stop. Now the author him, uh, himself tried to simplify, uh, very simplify into three different situations and how we become overwhelmed. I think there's many more, but he says three ways. We've taken on too much, we've taken in too much, or we're going too fast. So the first one, we've taken on too much. You know, our to-do list is more than we can handle. We've said yes to too many things. Uh, you know, in, 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 taking on too much. And our brain sees it as a threat. Not enough time or energy or uh, even ability to fit it all in. Our brain recognizes that. Or it sees it as a threat of failing, disappoint, uh, dis um, disappointing, feeling incapable. So our brain kicks in and sees it as a threat so it can freeze. We've taken in too much. Now research has shown that social media, and we all know this, and news can contribute to the overwhelming uh, feelings that we have. Often you hear people say, I just had to turn the news off, I can't watch it anymore. One study they did actually showed uh, those who consume, consumed more than six hours of media about the Boston Marathon bombing some years ago actually had higher stress levels than those who were actually there because they spent more time on social media hearing about it, uh, thinking about it, reading about it, taking too much in that it made their stress, res uh, stress levels rise. The other one is we're going too fast. We're caught in extremes and we need to learn to pace ourselves better. All the deadlines are there. You know how that is. So the author suggests we focus. So what do we do about all these things? We focus. You've heard of different techniques. There's calming techniques that are done by breathing, slow breathing and rhythmic breathing that actually calm you down and get your brain and your heart out of this threat mode. Uh, it helps you to get grounded. Twice this week, I was in a, a workshop or a class that taught the 54321 five, method to ground yourself or to calm. And, and this is what it is. Insert in, try this at home. In 60 seconds, uh, breathe deep and notice five, it's, it's about your senses. So notice five things you see, the sky, the grass, whatever. Uh, then four things you feel the coffee mug you're holding, the, you know, the pencil you're holding, three things you hear, music, birds, whatever, two things you smell, the lotion, you know, flowers outside, and then one thing you taste, for coffee, something like that. So you're getting your mind to focus on your different senses and become aware of that. That helps your brain pause and realize that there's not this immediate threat and so it can get out of emergency mode. I thought that was so interesting. And again, both these organizations, those are techniques they teach their, uh, their women and their clients to help calm their breathing and calm down because the psychological thing that your brain is going through is a real thing. After it calms you down, you can start asking the relevant questions. What can I eliminate? When you're in that mode, you can't even ask yourself sometimes those questions. So as you calm down, what can I eliminate? What can I delegate? What can I minimize today? Uh, what boundaries or limitations do I need to set today? You know, for instance, on your TV or your social media, your phone, that kind of stuff. What's one way I can slow down today? Perhaps it's a nap, perhaps it's a walk. 
Sometimes slowing down means adding one thing like a walk or a nap but it forces you to actually slow your brain down. I know when I go out for a run, I come back, my head is totally much more clearer. And so sometimes you just need to get that kind of, uh, you know, get your juices going. So I thought those were very interesting. Now, biblically though, I also know the answer is to turn to the Lord and cast our cares on him. Sometimes we have to calm down before we can do that. Um, Psalm 61, two says, I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. So the psalmist knew that that was the answer. Now we're filming this during Holy Week. It's Wednesday during Holy Week. And so I've been, you know, doing my devotions on the, the, the last week and the different things that were happening. And I was reminded that Jesus was overwhelmed as well. And we would not see him as a failure or weak. Now in the Garden of Gethsemane, in Matthew 26, actually in the other Gospels as well, Jesus comes to the garden and he, uh, him and the disciples and he says to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. And then in verse 37, it says, it tells us that he was sorrowful and deeply distressed. He himself said his soul was exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Uh, now I think that would be overwhelmed. Some different words uh, that are used in different translations for those words that, uh, that speaks about Jesus right there. Overwhelmed with sorrow, very sorrowful, deeply grieved, crushed with grief, swallowed up in sorrow. Just different translations use those different words. Uh, there's a lot of emotions packed into that one word, overwhelmed. And Jesus was overwhelmed with, crushed with, very full of, and swallowed up in deep, intense feelings. Yes, he was overwhelmed. Again, not that he was weak or a failure, but what does he do? It's one of my all-time favorite scriptures and one of my favorite places to teach when we go to Israel is in the Garden of Gethsemane because I picture him and his deep, intense sorrow and pain and yet going to the Lord and... Um, he, what does he say? He cries out to the Father and he said, Let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not as I will, but you will. I love it. And if you remember one coffee back, like, gosh, almost a year ago now, I think, I wrote a poem about nevertheless. It's really ministered to me. But he went to God. He brought all those emotions and all that intense overwhelmedness, if that's a word, to God in prayer. You and I, ladies, can do the same. No matter what you're overwhelmed with, if it's a to-do list, a list or expectations or, you know, or, or just life, however you want to describe it, we need to follow Jesus' example through our stress. Get alone, breathe, pray, enlist other people to pray. Now his disciples fell asleep, but you can enlist your friends to pray and cry out to the Lord like the psalmist does. Pray, evaluate, seek his will. So important. May we learn to follow Christ through all of our trying and difficult times. He will never abandon us in our stress. He will always walk us through it. And me, may we get to the point where in our overwhelmedness, when we're praying, that we will say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Father, I thank you for the example of Christ. As he, I know, had to be overwhelmed with what was ahead, what he knew was ahead and the pain that was coming, not just the physical pain and the emotional pain, uh, Lord, but the spiritual pain of you turning from him uh, for that short time. God, I can't even imagine that. But he prayed and he came to you and he cried out to you and said those amazing words nevertheless. And so, Father, I pray that we would follow his example again, that we would get alone, that we would breathe, that we would pray, and that we would cry out to you, that we would cast our cares on you because you care for us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, ladies. I pray you have a great day.